Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where the in-game marketplace is having a summer sale until July 31st and I decided that this would be a good opportunity to fly some of the planes I haven't flown in a while in particular some of the fighters because people seem very interested in the fighters and want to know how they are you know how they perform and how they look and all that business and we'll go through them I, I, in this video I'm just gonna do the F-14 and F-15 by DC Designs and then I'll work from there I'm going on the basis of like how many reviews they already have so it looks like the, the people are interested in this sort of thing uh, so I'll go there but uh, in a subsequent video I'll take a look at the F-104G by Sim Skunk Works and uh, I'll see uh, I'll just see which ones I haven't flown in a while and go with that. Personally, as far as what I'm thinking of getting, this quickie is interesting because I like weird planes. And Burt Rutan planes are by far my favorite. So uh, I already have the C-22J. Most of these planes I get from other sources, not from the marketplace, because I got them closer to when they came out and they weren't on the marketplace yet. So I have the C-22J. I have the TF-104G as well. Taking a look here, of course I have the PMDG DC-6 already. Uh, I've done a few videos relatively recently on that, so the Cauldron Rafale I like. This I have it and I like it. I'll just say I very much like the Cauldron Rafale and the C22J. I think they're really cheap for what they are right now. And the only catch is I think some people with VR had trouble with the Rafale because its cockpit is very narrow. Uh, so they kept poking out of it, but I don't know if that's fixed or not. It might be. Uh, they, uh, the F-14 has been updated recently, so I better take a look at whether there is any significance to the update. We'll see what it looks like and how it feels. And of course, a lot of things about the sim have changed also since the last time I flew it. And the F-16, maybe I'll do in a subsequent video. So anyway, there are all these things, but one effect, oh, and let's not forget the F-35, which is very popular, but uh, the India Fox Seca one, but that's not on sale, alas. Poor, poor everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, probably a lot of people would be looking forward to that one being on sale. But anyway, uh, important to note as far as the planes on the marketplace is that you can't fit weapons on there. Not that you can use weapons in the game anyway. But visually speaking, you can't fit weapons on the versions here. And so there is a benefit to getting it from Sim Marketplace, like I mostly did. Or I think some of them I got from the Just Flight uh, webpage. And so, yeah, you, you might think about that. But if it's going to be like a fairly steep discount, an interesting discount versus getting a full price and being able to put cosmetic weapons on it's up to you whether you think that that's worth it is it worth 10 extra bucks i don't know so anyway we will go ahead i mainly got it from elsewhere because it was released elsewhere first and i was impatient so f15 um we will fly out of nellis i think i think that's fair so we'll fly around las vegas a bit and we'll also, we'll, uh, with the F-14, we'll fly around Miramar. So, yep, Nellis. And I'll just go with the F-15C. The DC Designs Concord is another thing that uh, I think is on sale. And I did a live stream with it recently, so I'll post the results of that sometime soon. And you can judge from that whether that seems like a good deal or not. Uh, but I'm just going with the F-15C and the first one here. And there is also the DEI versions. Uh, the D version has a, NAS, a freeware NASA livery available off of flightsim.to. But we're going to go with this. I'll keep it fully fueled. And see, uh, the, I guess, well, maybe I shouldn't feature the weapons because they're not available on the marketplace version. So I'll leave those off. But basically, you uh, type in 190 pounds uh, here in order to get the sidewinders or 350 pounds here to get the amrams or 410 pounds for the sparrows that's how it works but again just cosmetic and everything i have the latest versions as far as i know and yeah it's just been a while since i've actually flown it so i don't remember if that upper panel is there it's a fuel panel the, uh, th these are i mean train display Oh, I guess it does show the airport there. Um, and some of the stuff... Oh, uh, VOR and TACAN information, it does show 
that if you put that, put that there. So this is how the cockpit looks. A little bit of a sun glare there. Um, I think the throttle levers are a little bit better since the last time I saw it. They had a weird shininess to them. They're a little bit more just plain worn out this time. So there have been some improvements. Let's take a look outside. There's one of the liveries that come with it. So yeah, tolerably, toler tolerably good exterior textures. And, well, with that, let's go. Now, with this plane, uh, just throttling up will give you the afterburner. You do not have to press a separate button to toggle the afterburner, which happens with some other planes. And the afterburner effect was what you saw there. And so anything below a certain point in your throttle will be non-afterburner. It's about the 85% mark. So, flying around. I think we just broke the sound barrier. Maybe that's not good. Oh, oh, we had a little bit shaky there because I was doing something unreasonable with it. It seems to frequently like to get out of the camera view. Let's zoom out. So yeah, without afterburners, it can exceed the speed of sound. And it can pull quite a few negative Gs, but you can also red out, apparently. <laughs> I, I think that's the first time I've read, uh, done a red out in Flight Sim. That's interesting. It's rare to do that in the cockpit, because there's more of an automatic sense of what's pushing it too hard. So, as far as our speed, we're at Mach 1.0607, there. I haven't turned on the afterburners yet. Now, mind you, uh, just because it doesn't have the afterburner effect or the sound, doesn't mean the fuel consumption isn't already afterburner-ish. Let's see. Fuel flow, uh, 12,000 pounds per hour, it says. I'll turn on what I think is afterburner. It doesn't seem to change, does it, on that? So, I, I think maybe we already had some afterburner on. It's sort of got a more continuous fuel flow than it probably ought to. But I would have to know the exact sort of fuel consumption on and off the afterburner for the F-15 to be sure. It, it, the afterburner effects, if they were just perhaps a little bit less opaque, would work pretty well. I think they're just a touch too opaque is the problem. Conversely, I've also seen planes where the afterburner effect is just trans too transparent. That happens as well. So we'll see what kind of speed we can get at low altitude consistently. Normally, a plane like this, it's probably a bad idea to go beyond 800 knots indicated airspeed at low altitude, or any altitude really. Um, we're, at, we're approaching 800 now. I wonder if it has any warning about that sort of thing. It just might not be able to go much faster down here. I mean, it seems to be slowing down and we're not level yet. Oh, the ground goes by pretty quickly. 
again, the max speed at low level is quite different from at high altitude. We can easily go past Mach 2 at high altitude. Uh, if you don't already know, the Mach number is indicated on the HUD at, uh, with the M there. So we are past the speed of sound. Also, should be evident. Ah, this doesn't have the sonic boom effect that some of the other planes do, where it's silent up front and has the sonic boom and then the sound in the back. So that doesn't seem to be here yet. Uh, the DC Designs Concorde has that. So I'm not too sure why the DC Designs F-15 does, and maybe they have a new update, but I'm, I thought I had the most recent update, so... Perhaps they have some things to add to this plane yet. I think as far as if you're level, I don't think it's gonna go too much more than Mach 1.2-ish. But, let's go a higher altitude and see what it can do in the thinner air. I don't think it can sustain the climb too long like this, but long enough. We're at 32,000 feet. I'm just gonna level out at uh, 40,000 feet and we'll re-break the sound barrier and see how fast we get. I'll just keep it level. The Sim Skunk Works F-104 has a simulation for the drag of external stores like the external tanks but generally speaking most aircraft do not have that including this one. Um, that's a rarity and required Sims Works to make an external sort of app to deal with that. Uh, I think actually for the FRF one, they have it sort of internally built, but still it has to be a separate sort of plug-in in order to figure out that drag. That's not something that's built into the Sim. So, uh, we see... Lake Mead, and then the start of the Grand Canyon over there. We're at Mach 2.3 now. Ground speed, let me see if this shows us. Uh, the true air speed right now is 1300 knots. We could sustain that for an hour, another hour. We're at 900 knots indicated and it doesn't feel like it's gonna be enthusiastic about going too much faster than this. Uh, not if we want to keep it stable. But this is about what one would expect from the F-15. Uh, probably more than one would expect with the external tanks on. Okay, well, we're ready to sending. Let's see about descending rapidly, shall we? Oh, red right out. So, air break. Air break effect in this is quite tremendous. We're pointing straight down and we're still decelerating. Well, not straight down. I mean, uh, 55 degrees. I appreciate the air break, uh, speed break out indicator on the HUD. That's good. So yeah, it can be quite a fun plane to fly. Let's find a place to land it around here. Uh, it did sort of have a train, it sort of has a train thing going right now. Let 
need to figure out how to zoom out on that one. Okay, KSGU. St. George Regional Airport. That doesn't sound particularly big, but it's probably alright. Well, it's 9,000 feet, so that's no problem. Well, this uh, airport has a nice little corridor for itself. It might be a little bit too fidgety on roll when it comes down to landing. You really have to be careful with it. Yeah, I, I'd say it's not always the most pleasant thing to fly at low speeds. It's much, much happier at high speeds. I, I don't know what it's trying to do here. Well. Uh, no, I mean, the autopilot should have been off, but... I don't know. It was acting a little bit wacky. It, it feels like it needs some serious dampers, especially at low speeds. Anyway, so a bit of a, well, a very rough landing, but that has been the F-15. Clearly, I'll need more practice with it considering it wasn't acting exactly the way I thought it ought to right at the end there. But maybe I'm just too tired or something. We'll try the F-14 and see by way of comparison. So for the F-14, I'm gonna go with the F-14B. And we have some liveries. I'll, I'll go with this VF-143. Okay, so here's how the F-14 looks inside. Um, some things very similar, some things not so similar. The HUD is actually thankfully not exactly like the F-14B's HUD. Uh, I have have it in the DCS world and yeah, that HUD is uh, not general. It's more like a gu uh, fancy gun sight than anything else. Um, so we have the speedometer there and this is what everything looks like here. Uh, certainly looks very much like the F-14 in general. Just uh, minor details are different. Uh, you know, these, the RPM, the temperature and uh, fuel flow are very similar. Uh, basically the same thing. But, alright, outside. Oh, we have another F-14. That's convenient. I mean, it's a natural place for F-14s in Myanmar after all. So, this is how the exterior looks. This was released after the F-15, and so it benefited from uh, some things that they learned from the F-15 process and with regards to bringing it into Flight Sim. Okay. And... Why don't we get the afterburn effect? This is probably better. Uh, just having it be a flame in there. That's similar to uh, how they've done the Concorde. So, yeah, that might be interesting. Maybe the F-15 will get that or already has gotten that and I just need an update. The swing wing should operate automatically. Here we go, swing wing time. We're at 550. I've got the afterburner on. The Tomcat is a bit of a hefty plane. 
so that's after and off. That's at 75%. We'll see what kind of speed we sustain without the afterburner. So here we're at Mach 0.9. And I think without the afterburner it's not going to go past the speed of sound, which is realistic. I don't know if the F-15 really can go past the speed of sound without afterburner. But... Pretty sure the F-14 can't. Uh, not in level flight. And so this seems pretty reasonable overall. Okay, but with afterburner in level flight. Oh, there's the other F-14. We'll see how it does. And it might be that the F-15 really was an afterburner, which is, but just wasn't displaying the afterburner effect. you know, effectively an afterburner given the fuel flow and thrust. So at low altitude the F-15 basically did uh, Mach 1.23 or thereabouts. Uh, we're at Mach 1.22 right now. We're probably gonna get to about the same. Uh, maybe a little bit faster actually, Mach 1.23, uh, sorry, 2.4, 1.24 there. Mach 1.25. That's probably close to about all it can do, maybe Mach 1.34. Okay. We are going to try going up. My pilot self is having trouble with that, but overall we ascend pretty easily to 40,000 feet here. And the wings should have spread out and everything too. Uh, the camera sometimes doesn't cooperate with me. And I automatically put the flaps down as well. It's scrumbling, which is good. Actually, I like that it's scrumbling. I still have the afterburner on. And we're accelerating. I can tell by the wing. And we broke the sound barrier. But that was a uh, normal sound barrier, uh, well, shall we say classic inaccurate sound barrier break. So it's also not like the Concord, where it's silent up front, has the crack, and then has sound in the back, or basically how it ought to be. I'm comparing it to the Concord because it, that is from DC Designs as well. So about 45,000 feet. And accelerating past Mach 1.3. I'm not sure there is an autopilot. <laughs> uh, no, there there is one over there. I feel like, and again, it's rudimentary. And I, again, I'll, I'll just avoid using it. On a plane like this, I would never trust it anyway. Well, we're south of the border, surely. We should probably head back to Tijuana. But we'll see how fast we go first. Okay, we are past Mach 2. 
Okay, well, taking a look at things. On the true airspeed down here, we are at 1400 knots. And we are approaching Mach 2.5. And the altitude's climbing. So, quite a lot of power here. To be perfectly honest about the situation, this is beyond the F-14's uh, max speed of Mach 2.34. Um, so we're overperforming a bit. But perhaps we shouldn't complain about that. Alright, I think I will turn back. In general, I'm biased towards the F-14. I definitely like its looks. Even disregarding Top Gun. But, you know, that is not where I got my love of the F-14, amazingly enough. Yeah, it's possible that uh, I got my interest in the F-14 from a game called Jet Fighter. From the, I mean, I think it was published in the late 80s, but I played it in the early 90s. An MS-DOS game. Well, the first flight sims I played. Our indicated airspeed is just off the charts now, but that was because we were going down. Literally, because there isn't enough digits on the HUD to display all of it. We were actually in the thousands, uh, above a thousand knots indicated, but there's only three slots because this plane was never meant to go to that much of an indicated airspeed <laughs> so anyway you are getting a particularly souped up F-14 with this I vaguely recall a novel series featuring ridiculously souped up planes I think it was called Wingman or something like that Okay, well, San Diego and Tijuana. That, that sound went from 100 to practically zero in a hurry. Well, I think that there's our airport, isn't it? Well, this was much better behaved on a severe approach than the F-15 was. I don't know what was up with the F-15. I'd still say, I mean, it's a severe approach because I came in steeply. But, uh, yeah. It did that fairly nicely considering the severity of it. Then again, it's meant to land on carriers, so... Not too much of a surprise. Alright, so that has been the DC Designs F-14 and F-15 planes that I am very often asked about in the comments, uh, even long after I made the videos of them. So that is how they are at the moment as far as I know. Hopefully this answers some questions, and I will eagerly fly some of the other planes I haven't flown in a while in subsequent videos. So with that, Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.